Hey guys, uh, my name is Tom from Amped Airsoft and welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to be going over tanks. If you're an AEG user, you can stop watching the video now. We are talking about tanks generally used for HPA, pretty much only used for HPA, uh, when we're talking about airsoft. So we're going to go over the differences of different tanks, the basics of uh, how to use a tank, what to look for when you're buying, and the main components. So let's start with the main uh, components of the tank. So we're gonna start here with this nice larger Ninja tank. Going over the two main parts of the tank, obviously we have the main body of the tank itself. This is gonna be your storage. This is where all of your compressed air is gonna be. The other part that we have is the head of the tank. So that's gonna be this part here. It gets screwed into the body of the tank and then it controls whether uh, you have an SLP tank or a non-SLP tank because it's gonna control the output pressure here. Let's go over the parts of the head of the tank. There's a lot more going on with that than just the storage area. The storage area is literally just a storage area for the air. First part, where we're gonna put our air in. We have our fill nipple here. This is where your local field or your local place that you get uh, your tanks filled up at is gonna connect air up to and they're gonna fill into here. That's gonna then fill the main compartment and then we're gonna move into the next part of the head of the tank. Your gauge is then gonna read how much pressure is in your tank. Your gauge is gonna go from zero all the way up to 5,000 PSI. On most of the airsoft tanks that we're talking about, there's some that might go a little bit higher, but realistically uh, that you're never gonna hit those pressures in an airsoft tank. There are three other parts to go over. Uh, this part here and this part here are both considered uh, burst discs. Burst discs are a safety feature that if your tank were ever to be overpressurized, these would burst instead of the head trying to work itself off with all that built up pressure inside of it. So it is a one-time use safety feature uh, so that in case this would ever become overpressurized, nothing bad would happen. Um, when these burst, what's gonna happen is all the air is going to leak out of them, and then you will need to get it replaced, which is very cheap to do, um, before you can use your tank again. So your tank is no longer operable once a burst disc goes, but it is very cheap to replace one of these burst discs and then have a working tank again. The final part of this is going to be the output area. So this is where you're gonna attach your regulators. This is where you're going to uh, hook up to your whole airline system. And uh, the output pressure of the tank is gonna uh, go into your main regulator. Um, the head of the tank uh, is also considered a regulator itself. It is regulating the 3,000 or 4,500 PSI that you have in the storage area all the way down to the output pressure. Your output pressure is gonna be in one of two ranges. It's going to be either SLP, super low pressure, which is gonna be an output pressure of around 350 PSI, or it's gonna be non-SLP, which is gonna be much higher output pressure, around 600 to 800 PSI. I'm not gonna get too much into non-SLP versus SLP. We have a whole video covering that. So that's basically your tank head and your tank body. Now there's one other thing to go over on your tanks and that is the size indicator, the PSI indicator, and your uh, hydro date. So let's go over where to find that on different tanks. So let's talk about the size and your pressure indication. So your size and your pressure indication are gonna be the two easiest things to find on your tank. They're probably gonna be the biggest or the most highlighted numbers on your tank. So on a Ninja tank, this one is gonna be considered a 62 cubic inch tank. That's gonna say that this is 62 cubic inches in size versus this 48 cubic inches in size tank, okay? We have a few different size of tanks over here. Uh, we have a 68 carbon fiber, I believe. Well, I don't need to believe, I need to read it. Uh, we have a 48 cubic carbon fiber versus this 48 cubic aluminum. And then we have 68 carbon fiber tank as well. Um, and we will go over why these two look different in size, but are the same capacity. And then over here, we have a 26 cubic aluminum tank from Tipman. Okay. So that's the cubic inches. Again, they're very easy to find. Uh, they're probably gonna be the biggest number. So again, Ninja's gonna be right there. HK is gonna be here, very similar to Ninja on their aluminum tanks. And then your colored slash carbon fiber ones are gonna be in the color of the uh, color that you have. 
And then again, HK, a uh, different style of carbon fiber tank is going to have it on right there. So it's a little bit more subtle on this version of the tank. So uh, let's go over the next large number on every tank, and that's gonna be your PSI. So aluminum tanks are generally gonna be 3,000. Most, uh, there's not really a lot of aluminum tanks that can hold anything higher than 3,000 as an airsoft tank. There's plenty of different styles of air tanks for scuba gear and other things like that, but for airsoft, these aluminum tanks are generally only gonna hold 3,000 PSI, as you can see right there by that large number. There's one on here, there's one on here. The other tanks, these carbon fibers, are gonna hold up to 4,500 PSI, which you can see right there on this red one. The other very important numbers and very not as easy to find numbers is going to be your hydro date. So your hydro date, one of the most important things about an HPA tank or a pressurized tank in general is that they are gonna have what's called a hydro date. That is going to be the date of manufacturing of the tank found on the tank itself and then that is when it was last hydrostatically tested to say that this is a safe pressurized container to use. I'm being very specific on how I word that because um, there is a very specific way of testing these tanks. Um, basically what that means is if it has a date stamped onto it, it has been tested, it has been certified, these are safe to use and put pressure into them. All these tanks are gonna have a hydro date on them but the hydro date is going to be a little bit different and found in different places of each one of these tanks. So we're gonna go over aluminum tanks first, and then we're gonna go over carbon fiber tanks. They are different when it comes to hydro uh, dating. So I went over a little bit of what it is, but hydro dating basically certifies the tank to be safe from the date of manufacture. There is a test that gets done on all these tanks to determine that they are safe to be used under pressure. You can find that date on an aluminum tank generally around the top side ring of the tank. There is going to be a few different things being written on this tank, basically stamped in in this upper area. On this Ninja, you're gonna have two lines of text. I believe on the HK, yeah, it's gonna be one ring of text. And then on the Tipman, it is gonna be two lines of text like the Ninja. So on all of these aluminum tanks, you are going to find your hydro date on one of these lines of text here. The thing you are going to look for is two numbers with a unique symbol and then two numbers after that. So an example of this is found right here. That is your hydro date for this tank. It's a little hard to see because it's embedded. Basically I have 08, weird symbol that I don't really know what it is, but weird symbol in the middle and then uh, the year of manufacturing, which is gonna be 23. So we have a tank that was made in August of 23. Your hydro date is the date it was manufactured. A lot of people hear the term, oh, my tank's out of hydro, or hey, your tank is out of hydro. What that means is that your tank is now five years since the date and month of manuf since the month and year of manufacturing. So that is what your hydro date is. When your tank is older than five years, you need to go get it rehydroed. I'll talk a little bit about the rehydroing process once I go through finding the date on all these tanks. Basically, what you need to know is that once your tank is out of hydro date, which would be five years past the manufacture date, you need to go get it rehydroed. With aluminum tanks versus carbon fiber tanks, you can get these tanks rehydroed as much as you want for the life of the tank until it fails. Once it fails, you cannot get it rehydroed. So that's the cool part about aluminum tanks. They can last for longer than carbon fiber tanks can because of the construction of the tank. And again, we'll get into what hydrostatic testing looks like and how you go about doing that and all that in a second here. So on carbon fiber tanks, you're gonna find a hydro date on them as well. They're actually, in my opinion, a little bit easier to see and read um, because of how uh, they're stamped on the tank. So an HK tank is gonna be very similar to a Ninja uh, and uh, First Strike tanks in where they put the hydro date. So the hydro date on this one is gonna be right here. 
on the tank. So pretty much middle of a bunch of text. So the hydro date on this one is 05, unique symbol, and then 24. So this was made in May of 24. So five years after that, so May of 2029 is when this tank would eventually be out of hydro. The reason I'm going over carbon fiber different than aluminum is A, because the date is found a little bit different on carbon fibers, and B, carbon fiber tanks can only be rehydroed three times. So the maximum length of time that you can get out of a carbon fiber tank is 15 years from the original date of manufacturing, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're buying one of these more expensive carbon fiber tanks. You do get some benefits with carbon fiber versus aluminum, the main one being weight and another one being a uh, higher pressure rating. So the, most carbon fibers are gonna be holding around 4,500 PSI, whereas aluminum tanks are gonna be holding around 3,000 PSI. So that means you can have a lighter weight package with the same or higher capacity than a heavier weight, bulkier package. Um, that is one of the many, many benefits of a carbon fiber tank and the reason why a lot of people use them. The downside and one of the other main differences is going to be the price. Carbon fiber tanks are always going to be more expensive than uh, aluminum or other metal kinds of tanks. Um, so that is the other big difference between the two of them. So we've gone through differences, we've gone through hydro dates and how you find them. Um, let's get into what hydro testing looks like. So hydro testing is when you take your tank, it's out of hydro date, it's been five years since the date of manufacture, and you go, oh crap, nobody's gonna fill my tank, I need to send it in. Um, so what we recommend doing is either you can find a local tank testing place. So there's actually a lot of local scuba shops that use local guys that have a hydrostatic testing place. We have one uh, local to us that we get our tanks hydrost hydrostatically tested at. If you don't have a local guy or you don't know how to find them, what we recommend is actually reaching out to Ninja directly. Ninja is actually one of the companies that I've used personally in the past to get a non-Ninja tank retested at. They're actually really good to work with. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go onto their website, you're going to hit the contact info and you're gonna email them and say, hey, I need to get my tank retested uh, for the hydro date. And they'll send you a form, you'll fill that form out and mail your tank into them. It's gonna cost about $60 to get it sent into them. So if you have a tank like this HK Army 48 3000, a lot of people, I think these run for about uh, $45. A lot of people end up, if it's out of hydro date and they really need to get a rehydro, a lot of people end up buying a new tank that way. But if you have something like a $200 carbon fiber tank and you don't want to buy a brand new carbon fiber tank, you could pay Ninja $60 to rehydro your tank and it's good to use for another five years. This is what I've personally done with all my carbon fiber tanks. So that's what we recommend to do. It's probably the easiest way and probably the most universal way to get your tank re-hydro uh, tested is to send it into Ninja. Again, they have a form on their website, they have a contact on their website, and they have a way for you to go and do it on their website. It's very simple to do, and we'll put the link down below to their website so you guys can uh, just find it pretty easily. Um, but that's what you do for hydro uh, testing. We generally recommend just send it to Ninja if you don't have a local guy. If you have a local guy, it's actually a lot cheaper. Uh, most of the local guys are doing it for around 25 bucks, depending on the size of the tank and the date of the tank and the manufacturer. But it's honestly a lot cheaper if you can find a local guy. Um, the way that you find a local guy is you either go to your local field if they have a person that they go to, or you call a scuba shop and you ask them if they have the capability to do it, or if they have a person that they recommend. Okay guys, so that's about it for the basics of tanks. We've gone over the different types, aluminum versus carbon fiber. We've gone over pressure ratings, sizes, and what the heads do versus the storage areas do. We've gone over hydro testing. Um, we've gone over basically all of it. If you guys are interested in learning more about SLP tanks versus non-SLP tanks, take a look at our previous video on that. It's gonna go into a lot more detail about SLP tanks themselves and regulators as well. But guys, with that, thank you guys so much. My name's Tom from Amped Airsoft. And as always, stay safe out there and have fun. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.